I started going to college and going to class, you know, my parents always thought, oh, he's going to school early. What, you know, what a good son. He's going to class early. But they didn't really know the true reasons why I was going to school early. I used to go to class early so that way I could be the first one there to get the seat in the back of the class. That way, when I walked in, there's no one. I have to crawl across this person, you know, to sit in that chair. Being overweight is, that's the worst thing possible is to have everyone's attention on you. Growing up, I, you know, weight for me wasn't really an issue. I was real active. I played soccer. My dad was a coach. And once I hit about fifth grade, probably when I started to put on, you know, some weight and, you know, parents noticed. I noticed it, but I wasn't really concerned about it. You know, he's a little heavy set, he's chubby, he's cute. You know, he had little, he had little chub cheeks. But it wasn't really a concern. He enjoyed most everything I fixed and like a lot of people in the South and, and within my family, I cooked the way my mother and my grandmother did. I was raised on biscuits and gravy. So when he loved biscuits and gravy and I could encourage him to eat more. He f eventually dropped out of soccer. After two seasons of Little League baseball, he quit baseball. I think he began to feel like he couldn't keep up and compete with the other kids but we tried to encourage him to play, but he just quit. I guess that's when I began to realize that his weight was affecting his lifestyle. I say good dive, Andy. Okay. Hey. Uh, through elementary school, he continued to put on weight, and quite honestly, he was the biggest kid in his class. That's kind of, you know, when the bullying, I guess you could say, started. You know, I would be called, you know, Andyopolis because, you know, I was big enough to be in my own city. We were studying one night, he was doing vocab words, and he looked at me and he said, Mommy, he goes, if I could have one wish from God, it would be that I could be skinny. But as a parent, you see your child struggling with being overweight. But the thing that seems to make them the happiest is food. So that's what you give them. There are a lot of moments, and it's a terrible thing to say as a parent, where I looked at him and my greatest fear was that he would be the 35-year-old kid living in the basement in his parents' home, playing video games and eating and gaining more and more weight. But I didn't know what to do about it. I was probably about 250, 240 in high school, so I mean, nothing crazy, but I was still a pretty big kid, but I also played basketball, so I was active. And then as soon as I graduated, I started going to college, and I probably put on about 60, 60 pounds or so. Uh, my peak weight was 317 pounds. So in January 2015, I started going to the gym, but this time I didn't stop. I was done being fat. I was done seeing, you know, the number on that scale just go up and up. And between January of 2015 in May of that same year, he lost 60 pounds. He was doing eight, nine, 10 miles a day on the treadmill and the elliptical, and, and I was shocked. I was down about 60 pounds, but what I was doing was kind of starting to slow down. I was starting to kind of plateau out because I was doing the same thing every day, you know. However many miles on the treadmill, my body was getting used to it. Part of my fear was that at some point Andy would plateau, and that if he did, he would quit. 
I was at work one day and one of my customers had come in and was talking about he couldn't stay very long because he and his wife had an appointment with their trainer. Got talking about him and I'm like, oh, I said, so what's he like? Oh, he's great. You know, he does meal plans. He works out with you. So he gave me his name and address. That's how we came to meet Jerry Hughes. It's a tricky thing when you meet with someone and they're talking about losing a lot of a weight. Uh, the deal is, is with truly obese people, you're going to have a lot of uh, a lot of excuses, and I don't mean that in a bad way. They've just that's their coping mechanism. My whole family's built like I am. We're short. We're heavy set. You know, and he looked at me and he said, "You guys are, you know, all big." I said, "So I'm guessing when Andy was born, uh, he came out 30 pounds." And the look that she gave me. And I stop for a moment, and in my mind, I'm thinking, okay. And I said, well, no, he weighed about seven pounds. And he goes, Mary, we all start out about the same size. And it was an epiphany. When working with Andy, the physical stuff, again, teaching him how to lift in the gym and spotting him and, and doing those things and taking him through that, that is unbelievably easy. That will never, ever be the story of what Andy and I went through. The hours outside of the gym. Hours on the phone. Hours working on things, meeting each other outside of the gym to talk about mentality and how to overcome things. That's where this battle was won. If you do not control your mind, you will never conquer your body. If you want it, you gotta go get it. And for me, I didn't struggle a lot with it, but I did have moments where I did break. I don't think I would be wrong to say that if we had not had Jerry, that Andy, I don't know if he would have failed completely, but he would not have been as successful. I challenge you to look at obesity like anything else. It's a problem. I don't think if your child had diabetes or couldn't see right or speak right, I don't really have any doubt that you as a parent would seek out all means necessary to help your child. Parents do it all the time. We buy kids certain clothes, certain shoes. So you go that far, why would you not fix the one thing that can be the most harmful to your child? Because once you fix that, then their whole life changes. Today I weigh 146 pounds. First thing I'm gonna do when school starts is I'm gonna show up 10 minutes late to class. I'm gonna walk in and everyone's gonna look at me and I'm not gonna have a care in the world if I have to sit in the front of the class. Andy walked around this world at 317 pounds. Trust me, at 145, it looks drastically different. It's hard to believe what he came from and what he is now. I mean, he's more outgoing now. It's like he's a newborn all over again. He has to experience everything for the first time. Sitting in a classroom isn't the same. Walking down a hallway isn't the same. The thoughts that go through his head, the way he thinks people look at him, judge him, approach him, everything's new to him. We have a family friend and she saw Andy after he had lost weight. She hadn't seen him in probably a year. And she looked at him and she cried. And she said, this is the Andy that I always knew was inside. You've got to want it. What I did isn't a miracle. Do not put Andy's picture next to the word miracle. If you want to do Andy justice, put his picture next to the word discipline. I just carry myself with so much more character, you know, because I know now that I'm worth everything that I've gone through. He'll have this story for the rest of his life. He's such a good kid. He really is.